Welcome. I wanted to tell a little story today. And I've got a couple reasons for doing it. But this story begins just after I sold my house in Cincinnati. And I was waiting to get out of the United States. And Air Mageddon was going on. And also, the house was in Cincinnati that I sold. And Cincinnati has very few international airports as destinations. Two, to be exact. From Cincinnati's international airport, which, by the way, is located in northern Kentucky, not Cincinnati, Ohio, but they call it Greater Cincinnati International Airport. Well, non-stop internationally, you got two choices. Toronto, Canada or Cancun, Mexico. Whereas places in Texas like Dallas and Houston, they fly to 56 and 58 international destinations nonstop. So I decided to head to Texas. And I originally landed in Houston, spent a little time there. Then I've got a cousin up in Dallas and I was Going to go say goodbye to her since I was leaving the country for a long while. And I decided to go see my good friend Patches. Because he's in San Antonio. San Antonio was only about a three hour drive away from Houston. Well, I thought this would be an uneventful trip. So I rented a car from good old Budget. And when I rented this car, cars are in short supply at that time. Not everywhere had a car. Places were just out of cars. So, got something in my eye. So anyway, I rented a car from Budget in Houston, up by the Woodlands, and I did the smart thing. I went around the car very carefully and videotaped everything. This is a video of a Camry rental car. Thing there, so I decided to film that. That little chip. And I noticed at the time that I rented the car that the rear fender had a little tiny separation 
from the fender to the bu rear bumper cover, which is plastic and wrapped around this Toyota Camry. So I noted it in the film, put my finger next to it, and actually narrated the fact that this is loose. But I need a car, so I, well, I care if it's loose. So, but I want to document. And they put it on the paperwork as well, which was all right. So I ended up the next day, I decided I'm going to drive to San Antonio. And I'm driving from the Houston area, San Antonio, down their expressways. And, you know, 80 mile an hour is typical. So, anyway... I'm driving down from Houston and I'm heading to west towards San Antonio and I'm doing 80 maybe even more because people in Texas man they fly but anyway I'm going down there and lo and behold my legs get a little stiff so I decided I was gonna pull over a rest area when I get out of the car to stretch my legs, I walk around and all of a sudden I noticed the bumper cover had been pulled away from the car and wrapped around the back of the car. I'll show you a picture of it here. Well, that little spot of damage where it was pulled away from that where the where the fender meets, the wind ripped underneath there and bent this thing back and when I got out of the car and stretched my legs at a rest stop I walked around and I saw it you can see where it actually crinkled it by bending it clean back but I didn't hit anything you can tell I didn't hit anything because there's absolutely zero damage to the rest of the car it's just that piece wasn't secured and we noted that before I rented it but I guess going down the expressway at 75 mile an hour that wind got underneath there and just ripped it loose it's not hold, held by much oh well it was really ugly and evidently the wind got underneath of it and just pulled it off the car. Did a lot of damage. So I called Budget. Of course, I had to drive 50 miles out of my way to get to another Budget store that could have, give me a replacement car. And of course, the guy was real nice and understood. But that didn't stop him four months later for sending me a bill saying I owed for all those damages and they have a collection company that wants to collect that stuff well thank God I like to document on video because I called that company up and explained what happened and said I'd love to send you the video that I took before I rented the car that said this bumpers loose and I told the people inside the bumper was loose and they marked it on the on the sheet and lucky for me the people who collect also have the authority to say yeah well this isn't your fault and we'll go back and we'll tell budget that you don't owe this money and they sent me a nice letter to that fact so what was a three-hour trip to get to San Antonio turned into about an eight hour trip well I was going there to see my good friend Patches now let me tell you something about Patches I met Patches in 2005 when I was playing professional poker around Las Vegas and he was an exceptionally good dealer in Las Vegas he worked a little bit of the World Series but he also worked at a poker room in the Aria Hotel which is a really nice poker room and I guess for 10 years I would come in that room and every time he was in there we were friends 
we talk, we joke around. And uh, in 2015, I left Vegas and headed back to Cincinnati. And we stayed in touch. We probably talked once every month or two months. We would we would text each other and call up and just shoot the baloney and have a good time. So I came down there and he is dealing cards now at a place called San Antonio Poker Palace. And it's a little private club. You're supposedly a member of the club. That's how they get away with having poker clubs in San Antonio. So I went over and saw him there. Think, uh, well, I went over and saw him at another club where he was playing in a tournament. And he told me about his poker club. And I was wore out from this exhausting trip of the budget rent-a-car deal. So I went back to the hotel and said I'd call him the next day. The next day we went out, had lunch or something, I think, and he was telling me about this fantastic tournament they had on a Thursday at the San Antonio Poker Palace. And uh, their Thursday tournament is a $10,000 guaranteed prize pool tournament. They had $150 buy-in, and $125 of that goes to the prize pool, and $25 is a one-time admin fee. But this is a rebuy tournament, so you could have rebuys from 6.30 all the way up to 9.30, and you could get like a dozen rebuys if you wanted. And the rebuys were $125, and... They got you 40,000 chips. Now, originally, I think they gave you 50,000 chips to start, if I remember right. And then at the end of the rebuy period, there's a what they call a single add-on and a double add-on. For $50, they'll give you 50,000 more. And for $100, they'll give you $100,000 more. And the starting stack, I was wrong. The starting stack was 30,000 chips. But for ten dollars more, you get ten thousand chips, and they call that the dealer tip money. Now they had twenty-minute blinds starting at one hundred and two hundred, a very good tournament structure. And you know, I used to play a lot of tournaments. But uh, anyway, patches. I call him up on Thursday afternoon. He says, well, "Why don't you come over and play in this tournament?" I said, well, I don't know. Yeah, it's been a long while since I played any tournaments. You know, now I've been on ESPN a few times and uh, played in a couple, more than a couple $10,000 events, made a final table of a $10,000 World Series of Poker satellite event in San Diego and was on ESPN for it. So, Patsy says, hey, my boss, Richard, he owns the place. He'll put you in. I mean, you've been on ESPN and played, you know, with all the big boys. You played with Phil Helmuth and all the guys. So he'll put you in. I said, really? He said, yeah, come on over and, you know, have a good time. He'll put you in. I said, well, if he'll put me in. I couldn't turn that kind of a good time down. You know, I love to play tournaments. So I went over at 6.30 and met Richard and Patches, and Richard treated me like I was a rock star, and I'm no rock star. But he did. He 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 gave me the, the, the tour of the place and just was so friendly, and he put me in that tournament, and I played good poker and I didn't bust out I didn't need any rebuys but when it came time that the rebuys were over and there was an add-on he gave me a double add-on he paid for it he just gave me the whole double add-on hoped I did well and I had all right chips I was average but you know you gotta get a little lucky in a tournament you gotta get cards anyway 
but I may be just talking over some of the pictures I'm showing you. And I decide right there and then, this was the friendliest little poker room. Everybody I was playing with on the table was friendly, talkative, welcoming. The room has like seven tables, I think. And uh, so I decide I'll take some pictures. So I set up my camera on a tripod and, and let it run for about 20 minutes. And you actually may be uh, seeing some of that footage as I'm telling you a story. So we went over the uh, tournament from step by step by step. And I've got some pictures I'm going to be showing you here shortly. I'll probably blend them in over this narration. But there was this dude at the table wearing sunglasses and a cowboy hat named Charles, I think. And this guy just oozed cool. I mean, I remember commenting at the table at the time. You should be sitting on an old wooden bench with a guitar on your knee and an orange soda pop sitting on the floor, sitting on the outside porch of some general store, playing the guitar and singing the blues because you just have this look of cool about you. And he had personality that went along with it playing poker. I thoroughly enjoyed meeting this man. Uh, he was just uber cool. I'll probably cut in and, and show you a little excerpt right about here. Charles says he ain't gonna let him steal his blind without the money. I ain't gonna let him take his money like that. Man, heads up. I did not know he got no tournament. Man, with that hat and them glasses, I say he needs to be sitting on an old wooden bench in front of a general store with a guitar singing the blues. Where we had a little exchange, and and Charles was was the bomb. So. I lasted till about 1.30, 2 o'clock in the morning, I guess. Somewhere in that neighborhood before I got busted out. Way before the money. You almost have to go 4 in the morning to win that tournament. Unless, unless they uh, get down to a final table and decide to chop up the money and do a deal. It, it'll play at 4 in the morning. So it, it's a rather long term. I mean, it's 7 hours. So, basically, after I got busted out, I went around and I interviewed some of the people working there, some of the girls. And, uh, can I film you? Sure. What's your name? Uh, my name is Shaquilla. Shaquilla? Yeah, but they call me Keila for short. Keila. How long have you done massages here at the um, Palace Let's see. Um, new, so it's been about, what, two weeks? What do you like most about working here? Um, the energy of the players. Like everyone's pretty friendly. The jokes are always flying. The comebacks are good. Um, I, never, I don't know. It always seems like a good time in here. So I like, I like working here. Is it a good time in well, here? I appreciate it. It is a good time in here. It is a good time. I'm, I'm interviewing. You're interviewing? Yes. Welcome to the San Antonio Poker Palace. And what is your name? My name is Keegan. 
Keegan? Keegan. How you spell that? K E E G A N. Oh man, I, I read that in my dream somewhere. Oh, did you? I'm not you? sure. Oh. I thought I saw a sign. Meet Keegan. Oh. It might have been. I think you did. It might have been a sign. So I, what? Do you, what do you? How long have you worked here? Um, about two weeks. Well, you knew. Yeah. What do you like most me. about it? Uh, I like the people. I love the people. Love all the that. players and all the people that I work with and everything. That's, That's the best part. What do you like least? The money. It scares me. You need more money? No, it scares me. The money scares me. Why? Because I'm, I give people money every day. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, you're like a bank teller. Yep. Yeah. Makes me. That's makes be, me be on point. Yeah, you know, bank teller's got to be the worst job there is. I mean, you see all these people come in and get money and money and money and money, and you go home without money. Yeah, that's very true. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. You can't hide from me. Is that your phone? Yes. Hi. I video blog, okay. and I asked the boss, I told him I wanted to do a little feature about this place. Okay. Maybe if I do it like that, I won't see the, I won't see the whole. Clear. Yeah, you're clear. So what's your name? Khadija. You're going to have to speak up because I'm afraid that this thing's going to. Khadija. Gonna... How do you spell that? Um, K-H-A-D-I-J-A-H. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> and you're from the island of Guam. Yes. I researched you already. I stocked you online. Uh -huh. Okay, so. What do you, how long have you worked here? About three months. And what do you like most about it? I love the people. I love that it's always something new every day. Um, like just by watching. Yeah. Do, you, like do you like to play poker yourself? No. Are you going to learn? Yes. Okay. You want somebody to teach you? Yes. You want to come to Bangkok with me and I'll teach you? Let's go. All right. Let's go. <laughs> Your boyfriend probably wouldn't like that, but oh, man. don't tell him. One of her boyfriends. One of her boyfriends. How many you got? Oh, good. I count. You can't count, can you? No. You got more men? You got to beat him off with a baseball bat, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay, what do you like least about working here? Oh, nothing at all. Okay, well, that's a great answer. Thank you so much. Look at her do her work with all this cash. I'm here at the end. Yeah. San Antonio Poker Pack. Yeah, that's right. I'm here at the San Antonio <laughs> Editing Fix Over. I'm here at the San Antonio Poker Palace, and I'm talking to my good, good, good friend Patches, who works here. Now, how long have you worked here, Patches? I'll be two years in February. And this, and Patches was a premier dealer in Las Vegas, and I think I've known now for, since about 2004? Yes, around then. Or 2005-ish. 2005 2005-ish, yeah. 2005, yeah. 2005, I've known Patches. And even though I left Las Vegas on December 29th in 2014, I'm confident that we have at least spoken on the phone once or twice every couple months since I've been gone, which is amazing. You know, I've really kept up with it. Now, what do you like most about dealing here at the San Antonio Poker Palace? <laughs> most of the people, the people are very friendly. They're not like anyone you've ever met, like in Vegas. Yeah. I, I can certainly attest to that. I yeah. came in, I yeah. just played a tournament. This is the first tournament I have played. I guarantee you it's the first tournament I've played since 2015. Wow. Uh, I came back Cincinnati, I played one or two tournaments at the Cincinnati Poker Place down there. At the time they called it Hollywood Casino, I think. And uh, the people there stunk. I mean, grinders who were grumpy. And, and so what? There's a different kind of atmosphere out uh, here. Let me tell you. Yeah. Let me tell you. 
I have, uh, I hope I'm in frame. Am I in frame? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I have, from 2004 through 2010, I have motorhome and we traveled around. I went to so many local poker rooms and we played all over. And this is one of the nicest seven table poker rooms. Everybody's friendly. The guy who owns the place is great. They, they had a tournament and they gave away free tamales and they were really good to all the players, not just tournament players. They gave away tamales to the cast game players too. And I highly recommend if you ever get in San Antonio, hell with the other rooms. Come here first and you won't want to go to the other rooms. This is a Thursday night. They have $30,000 guaranteed tournament for a couple hundred bucks. It was great. Now, Patches, is there anything you would change about this poker room if you even could? Not a thing. You know what I mean? Uh, we actually expanding and getting the bar put in. It's, it's growing pretty fast. You know, faster than anyone expected. Hey, what's going on there? Oh, not to mention, we're a dog friendly room. Yeah, yeah. We got Jack over here, last guy. Hey, hey, Jack. Let, let me. Jack's been coming up to us wanting to throw his ball. And, uh. Hey, Jack. Hey, boy. I mean, usually when they have, when they have a. Usually in Vegas, if they had a dog in a poker room, it had to have a, a certificate that was a, a mental health dog. Yeah. Therapy, we used, therapy dog. We used, we used to see these players come in, and they would bring these little dogs in bags, like a little bit personal suitcase. Yeah. And these dogs, they were about as much personal therapy as I am a Chinese astronaut. Yeah. Uh, but this dog here, he's here because he, he's a fun-loving dog. So I just wanted to make a little video about this place. And Patch has been a good friend and told me about it. And I had a great time here tonight. They're just super friendly. Now, San Antonio Poker Palace is, is located at 1558 San Pedro Avenue, San Antonio, Texas. And probably the best place to follow them is on Facebook at SA Poker Palace, capital S, capital A. I'll leave the links down in the description. But let me tell you, if you're in America... And you happen to get San Antonio and you want to spend a good night doing something, you don't mind playing poker. This place is an outstanding, outstanding poker room. And I say that from a guy who had a 45 foot motorhome and traveled all over the country playing poker at little poker places from Minnesota to Florida. To California, I traveled around for a, for quite a bit playing small poker places and casinos. But you know, there's a bunch of small rooms around the country. But I don't think I ever had as warm of a welcome from everybody. I mean, the people down there were just flat out nice, and. Uh, very interesting. There were some characters. But if you're in San Antonio sometime and you decide you want to go play a poker tournament or play a little bit of cash games, hey, head your ass down to San, An San Pedro Avenue and see Richard down there who runs the place or Patches who deals. And you guys will have a really good time. Now, Somewhere in this video, I'm put, going to put in some of the interviews I had and some of the footage I had taken and cut in. And I don't know how I'm doing this, but 
the main reason I'm doing it is when a small business treats their customers right, and, and I believe from what I've seen, they treat everybody right. And by the way, at that tournament, they gave away food, and I'm talking about killer food. They had really, really good food. And you you want something to drink? Here it is. You can have what you want. I'm telling you, this place is just the bomb. So I felt like I wanted to do this video months ago because I was there June 23rd, and I'm making this video on October 23rd. July, August, September, four months. And I finally said, hey, I owe it to this company to just give a recommendation on how good they are. And they can post this up on their Facebook page. They can use it any way they want. But I'm sold on the place. I'm right now, what you're seeing behind me is the skyline of Bangkok, Thailand. And this place is twice as big as New York City in area, twice as big in population. You can get anything you want here. This place is amazing. An amazing, amazing place. It's also the most visited city in the world. And a Texas institution, namely 7-Eleven that was started in Texas, dominates the city of Bangkok. There are 4,400 7-Elevens in Bangkok. 4,400. People don't realize, even though 7-Elevens only in 19 countries, they have more 7-Eleven locations than there are McDonald's locations. That's pretty interesting to me, but so the story is, I stopped in San Antonio, and I was treated a mighty good time. And if you're ever down in San Antonio and you're looking for a good way to spend an evening, San Antonio Poker Palace, that's your place. Thank you. And you may see a little bit of trail and video and maybe some interviews with some of the employees following this y'all have a great rest of your life bye
Attention cash game players, uh, just for a few hands, if you can raise your hand, anybody plan on buying into the tournament? Asking for seating purposes only. Freddy's one, any more, any more? Any, any other players want to get into the tournament? Just let me know. All right. All right, tournament dealers, in three minutes you'll be going on a break. This is the most important part of the tournament. In three minutes, you have the option to do your add-on. Your add-on is $50 for 50,000 chips or the double add-on is $100 for 100,000 chips. We ask you to leave your cash game chips or cash underneath your stack and vacate the tournament area as we come around to do your add-ons. Once again, we have free tamales tonight. If anybody's interested that has some tamales is at the bar. Dealers, please start calling up your black chips to the biggest stack of the table without slowing the game down.
Yeah, you set up for it. Yeah, you are. Set up for it. Set up for it. Thank you. Freddie, you're good. I'll come to you, okay? You're good. I'll come to you. Bye. You're good. Not in a hand, you are on your second break. Once again, if you want to do your add on, leave the hundred dollars by your staff, and I'll come by with a hundred thousand in chips. This is your last opportunity to add any chips into the tournament. After this break, it becomes a freeze out, no one can re enter, and no other chips can be added to the tournament. Once again, good luck to you players and enjoy your break. selection of drinks. I guess you just go up and grab one. And somebody. Topo Chico mineral water. Haven't seen that for a while. A long while. Green tea. Oh, this place is a nice place. In addition, they got a nice little bar here, but 
They've supplied a bunch of free food for everybody, not just the tournament players. They've got free food for everybody here. This is a video of a Camry rental car. thing there so I decided to film that Charles says he ain't gonna let him steal his blind without the money. I ain't gonna let him take your take this money like that. I did not know he got no tournament. Man with that hat and them glasses, I say he needs to be sitting on an old wooden bench in front of a general store with a guitar singing the blues. 